Perhaps one of the first things you think about when you think about getting a grant is the idea of foundations and what they represent, and that is the idea of philanthropy. The transfer of wealth from an individual to a group is certainly nothing new. Plato had a sort of a foundation for his academy after his death, and the philosophical society operated as a foundation for Benjamin Franklin in the late 18th century. Other charitable trusts were certainly put in place. Think of them sometimes as robber barons, but today they're charitable trusts. The Carnegie Institute in Philadelphia, Commodore Vanderbilt, Henry Ford, John Rockefeller Sr. all followed suit in the beginning of the century. A second boon of philanthropy took place in the 1930s, in which Andrew Mell and Henry Ford and others set up foundations really to avoid giving up their profits and taxes. The biggest boom probably came after World War II. The desire for folks to shield their money from tax gains motivated people with wealth to give freely. But some of that was cut short in 1969 when Congress passed the Tax Reform Act, and a major provision of that act was to set up rules to regulate foundations and control potential abuses. The Tax Reform Act prohibited the use of grants for private purposes or personal gain and restricted the kinds of programs that foundations could support. The Tax Reform Act established the idea as well of operating foundations and non-operating foundations, those that give away money in the form of grants to programs, organizations, or individuals. The last major law probably to affect the idea of funding was the Economic Recovery Act in 1981, which required foundations to give away a minimum of 5% of their assets each year in the form of grants. Uh, the act, of course, was meant to ensure that foundations would really fulfill their stated functions. As well, though, with the idea of philanthropy in its more modern form is the idea of a mission. And I think it's very important to understand the precise mission of the funding source to which you're applying. Each funding source as well also has very precise structures based on that mission and ways to give. There are also very prescribed, in some cases, structures of requesting funding and structures of reporting funding. Let's talk for a moment about some funding sources that are well known, and I have experience with grants from each of these sources. To begin with, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, and of course all these foundations can be found on the World Wide Web, has a very precise kind of mission and a very articulated interest in asynchronous learning networks, those sort of learning networks that will provide anytime, anywhere education for people. Corporations, such as Becton Dickinson, fund global health care, local initiatives, they have matching grant programs, and they have community service awards programs. They're especially interested in effective prevention and disease management, particularly those ideas of appropriate technology and health. Among our government agencies, we can take a look at the National Science Foundation. I imagine each year their contracts received or probably in the nature of, of 2,000 of those colleges, universities, other research institutions in all parts of the United States. The foundation counts for about 20% of funds reward support academic institutions for basic research each year. NSF probably receives somewhere around 30,000 new or renewal support proposals for research and funds approximately 9,000 awards in areas such as biology, computer and information sciences, education, geosciences, math and physical sciences, as well as my interest, the social and behavioral sciences. And of course there are individual funders as well. Here you might think of Peggy Guggenheim and her work in supporting modern and surrealist artists, specifically her patronies, patronage rather, of Jackson Pollock. I think it's important to understand that you need to spend time working up and identifying your sources. I think it's a mistake to what we might call cold call a source. You need to begin by networking. You need to begin by networking with other people who have worked with the particular foundation at hand or other people who are working internally with the foundation. 
I think also you need to understand the source. You need to research it very meticulously and as well you need to begin to recruit an advocate within the funding source, someone who will perhaps even pre-review your proposal with you and let you know if you're on the right track. And I think you need to plan those first contacts very carefully with the source. I've written that you should come to the initial meeting with document in hand and I think I mean just that. It's best to come completely prepared when you go to your first contacts with the source. Again, the more you know about the source, the better prepared you'll be. In sum then, you're involved in a campaign. I don't exactly mean to recall World War II language, but nevertheless, it's you and a group of others who are going to be doing something very precise over a very finite period of time. It needs to be meticulously planned, it needs to be <clears throat> remorselessly pursued. You're in need from the very beginning of very precise information about the source and about what your capabilities are and the capability of your group to meet the call for proposals from the source. You're involved in a collaborative process. And the grants I've talked about that I've pursued over the years, I need to make it clear that I rarely operated alone. I always worked with others Sometimes I took a leadership role, sometimes my role was very far down, but I always worked with others to try to bring the grant into fruition. You're also involved in an iterative process. You'll call the funder, you'll call again, you'll pursue more research about the funder, you'll talk to others. As well, you'll think and rethink and rethink again your initial proposal plan. You'll sort of bring the horizon of understanding that you have about your project into the horizon of understanding that the funding agency has about the project. In this way, you're participating in a very iterative process. Finally, you need to recall Hemingway's idea of the ability to achieve grace under pressure. Because you are under pressure, foundations have specific timelines and guidelines for proposals and you want to be able to achieve that necessary grace under pressure that Hemingway talks about as you prepare, draft, and finally submit your proposal.